well as internal departments, simplifying billing and chargebacks. Veeam Availability Suite 9.5 includes all of this, plus much more. Read our What's New document for a complete list of new features and enhancements and download 9.5 today. Live from New Orleans, it's theCUBE. Covering Veeam on 2017. Brought to you by Veeam. Welcome back to New Orleans, everybody. I'm Dave Vellante with Stu Miniman. This is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. This is day one of our continuous coverage of VeeamON, continuous coverage of continuous data protection. Big theme here today. Maria Olson is here. She's the Vice President of Global and Strategic Alliances at NetApp. Andy Vandeveld is back. He's the Vice President of Global Alliances at Veeam. Folks, welcome to theCUBE. Good to see yeah. you again. Thank you, Thank nice you. to be here. So, first of all, let's, let's start with Maria. So, VeeamON, big show, a lot of action. How's it going? You know, the energy here is amazing here. You know, I remember being at VMON, you know, years before, and what I see here in terms of the number of customers and partners and starting to see the big growth in the enterprise market and all the announcements and innovation that they've made today is, is fantastic. It's like a groundswell, right? I mean, and so, you know, we've been following NetApp for years. You guys have, you know, the, the best snapshot technology in the marketplace, the customers love it, and very efficient and, and have always had sort of an interesting take on data protection. So, and data fabric obviously is a big theme of, mm -hmm. of NetApps these days. So explain that to us and we can get into how you guys partner. Sure, absolutely. So most uh, companies think of us as a storage company, but we really have evolved from a storage company to a data management company. We have a full portfolio of products, including all of our all flash FAS offerings, we did an acquisition, which was our largest acquisition with SolidFire as well. We also have uh, backup to cloud offerings with our AltaVault offering that backs up to Azure and Amazon. We have um, storage grid web scale. You know, we have a very full large portfolio. What all this allows customers to do and where NetApp is heading is in terms of being able to manage and move the data regardless of where it's at. So I call this the gold opportunity. I just came back from Sapphire. You talked to Bill McDermott. He talks about how data is gold. You heard the same thing here with Peter McKay as well. And to me, the whole thing, it doesn't matter if the gold's there. It's you got to be able to manage it and monetize and do something with it. And that's what NetApp helps provide. So Andy, that sounds very consistent with the strategy that the yes. team is putting forth that we heard certainly this morning and throughout this, this conference. So what's the partnership? Where do you pick up and NetApp leave off or vice versa? Well, uh, so you know, in the data protection space, um, it's the uh, ability to uh, manage the data to make sure that it's getting into uh, a form that can be uh, stored and and accessed and available as quickly as possible is really what we're focusing on. And you know, to do that, we need partners like NetApp who have the infrastructure assets that. Uh, that we can leverage, um, you know, as, and particularly as we move more and more into the enterprise business with enterprise customers. Uh, those customers are spinning off a lot of data. Um, they, they need their, bit, their data to be available as quickly as possible in the case of a, an outage or some other disruption to their business. And to do that, uh, Veeam needs infrastructure partners that have robust portfolios that can handle that sort of um, requirement, and that's where the relationship with NetApp comes into play, and it's been very good for us so over the years. I like this notion of data fabric; it has a connotation of fluidity, and, and 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 it sort of reminds me of the Veeam waves here a little bit. So, explain more, Maria, if you will, the the data fabric. What is that concept? How are customers actually getting value out of it? Absolutely. So data fabric is more of a framework, right? We don't have a SKU that you just go buy data yeah. fabric. It's really a framework and a portfolio of products integrated with our ecosystem of partners like Veeam to be able to manage and move the data, regardless if it's on-prem or where they want to go as part of their digital transformation. So customers are all at different phases in terms of where they want to go in terms of becoming more of a digitally oriented business. And we help get them there through the journey because of the strength that we have on the on-premise side as well as the integrations that we've done with our partner ecosystem, specifically you know, with Veeam and others, so we can help move them in that direction. So, when you, to take that a little, little bit further in terms of, 
So the customer sees this vast portfolio. Andy, you were talking before about sort of NetApp's infrastructure. It's, it's pretty vast. I mean, it's the leader in, in its space. Um, what are they asking you guys for? What are they challenging you to do, specifically in the context of data protection? So customers are asking us, number one, make sure that it's simple, right? And that's mm -hmm. one of the big value props that Veeam makes, right, number one. And yeah, NetApp. Ne and NetApp too, yeah. right? That it's always on and available, right? That there is no disaster that occurs, that the data is there, that we know where it is, that mm -hmm. we can manage it, we can back it up. Those are the big things. The third thing customers are asking for is help us in terms of how do we digitally transform our business, right? It's the business outcome that they're looking for, of which the products that NetApp and Veeam does is a subset of that that helps them on that journey so they can actually digitally migrate and become more of a digitally oriented business with our offerings helping in the whole backup and recovery and whole data management space. Yeah, okay. and, and I would just uh, you know, sort of um, uh, tag on to that. Uh, customers' consumption models are changing. So they're on-prem, they're in a private cloud, they're in a public cloud. You know, the, the, the way that they consume is changing and it's different and you know, no two look the same. And I think what customers are telling us is, uh, let us decide how we're going to consume. You just be able to, to accommodate that consumption. And that's really what we've been focusing on. So it, it's, you know, if it's in, a, in an on-prem environment, great. If it's in a cloud, public cloud, fantastic. If it's some hybrid uh, model, that's great too. We can accommodate that. And, and that's really what customers are asking us as well as you know, making sure that we accommodate the various business models that exist. So whether it's you know, purchasing licenses or uh, uh, some subscription-based models or whatever, you know, they want that flexibility and that's what they're asking us to provide. Ray, I'm, I'm wondering if you have any joint customers that you're highlighting here at the show or any specific examples you might be able to walk us through. So we have several joint customers. As a matter of fact, I mean, you heard um, Peter McKay talk about 210,000 customers. Of those, 30% are NetApp, right? So it's a very big area, right? And now in terms of some of the announcement they've, they've made in terms of you know supporting NAS in terms of the physical environment, sure. NetApp is a leader in that space, so it's even going to become broader, right? So you saw today in terms of Peter McKay t talking about the Denver Broncos, right? That's a big <laughs> NetApp customer in terms of you know the solutions that they have there. Also, um, Telefonica was announced there. Very large service provider. It's another big NetApp customer. So there's a lot of customers in the enterprise space. You know, Veeam's more known in terms of the SMB space, but when you start to look at the momentum they've had, right, and going up the stack, there's a lot of enterprise customers that we actually are jointly engaging with. What's and, go ahead. And, and I would just say that <clears throat> the more that we we penetrate the enterprise market and the service provider market, the more that we're going to need partnerships like we have with NetApp to come stronger um, because they're the the trusted advisors, the, the ones that the customers are listening to. It's easier for us just to ride on their coattails into these opportunities than to try to create these relationships all ourselves, and that's what makes this such a great partnership for us. The, the cloud service uh, customer channel base has come up a couple times today, but we haven't really explored some of the fundamental assumptions behind it. And what I want to ask you guys is, everybody sees the ascendancy of, of Amazon, very impressive, you know, amazing growth, uh, Yet at the same time, your, your respective cloud service provider businesses are also growing very rapidly. Sure. So you've got the disruption to the traditional legacy enterprise business. We all have covered that very well. But there's not much been discussed about what's going to happen within the cloud business. So there's maybe some camp that says, okay, everything's going to go to Amazon, and I don't think many people believe that. But What's happening within the cloud service provider base? It seems to be quite fragmented, which is a good thing for you guys. It seems to be local in nature, very specialized services, and ability to compete with Amazon and Azure because they're not competing necessarily with scale volume, they're competing in other ways. So I wonder if you could help us unpack that a little bit as to what's happening in your respective bases there. Yeah, so we're seeing a lot of momentum in the service provider space. So we've sold a lot of storage and data management over to, you know, with the large new service providers of the world, right? The IBM softwares, right? The Azures, you know, Google Cloud Platform, you know, all of them, as well as, you know, the existing ones, you know, the AT&Ts and the Verizons and Telefonicas of the world. And so we continue to see a fragmentation there, right? You kind of have the new world service providers, right? And the old world service providers. And they're all trying to, figure out the business model so they can make sure 
sure that they're all going to be there over the next, you know, 20, 25 years to see how this whole game evolves, right? Mm -hmm. But we have a big footprint in both of those camps. And as a matter of fact, one of the things that I love about the relationship between NetApp and Veeam is we're companies that are embracing cloud. We're not fighting cloud, right? We're really trying to embrace it. So we have multiple offerings in terms of NetApp across our storage and data management, across all the new emerging cloud players and the existing one. And Veeam also has, you know, pretty deep relationships. They just announced, you know, today in offerings, right, with uh, AWS and with Microsoft Azure as well. Anything you'd add, Andy? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I think uh, you're right about the uh, market being a little bit more fragmented. Um, there are smaller, more specialized cloud providers, and customers, you know, there's a set of customers that want that. Um, so I think it kind of gets back to the point that I was making earlier, which is the consumption models are changing and who they consume from in terms of cloud is not 100% consistent, and so we need to be able to deliver the technology that can accommodate whatever that decision is that the customer makes. From a partnership perspective, how does something like this start, and what do you, I mean obviously you say, okay, let's go to market together, that's a, a logical starting point, but then there's maybe some other integration that has to take place. What do you guys sort of set out to accomplish? What are the what are the the milestones, the metrics that you try to? How do you measure success on a partnership like this? How do you know when it's when it's when it's going to work and is working? Yeah, that's a great question. N number one, you first have to have alignment in terms of what solutions you're going to go out there and build. And I think part of the secret of the success of the relationship, if you think back in terms of NetApp made a big bet in virtualized environments, mm. in doing big differentiated offerings with <coughs> VMware, even though they're owned by you know EMC, right? Yep. And we were extremely successful, 50,000 joint customers. You look at Veeam, they made a big bet with VMware. So our installed bases and the co-innovation and development that we've done already there is already paid off there in spades. So number one, you got to have what the co-innovation and the solution that you're building. The second the second thing is an aligned go-to-market, right? In, in terms of what is our go-to-market plan, how are we doing that through the channel, is it a comprehensive program, what does that look like? And then it comes down to people at the end of the day and the culture. Do the companies have really good cultures and people that really want to go out and execute those mm. plans? Yeah, and we have you know strong alignment at the executive levels uh, as well, which helps because you need to have that sort of strategic vision. You know, you're looking out you know, 18 months, 24 months, are we in alignment? and I think that helps. Um, I, I would say another strong metric for Veeam is our net promoter score, uh, we're, you know, 73, it's off the charts, it's fantastic. That doesn't happen if you're not delivering the right solutions with the right set of partners. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, you know, to us, that's just another metric of how successful are these partnerships, particularly the one that we have with NetApp. And actually, I looked at NetApp's net promoter score, and we're 64. So we're way up there as well. Yeah, so that's really. e that's another area I mean, that we're very aligned. As you well. know, <laughs> NPS is interesting. I, I mean, if you're a, you're not really a one product company, but but you're smaller, and so it's easier to have a high NPS when you're smaller. NetApp's, you know, not. I mean now. Of course, you've done on tap. I wanted to be on that graph up there on the yeah. keynote. I was That's on. pretty good. <laughs> I was at ServiceNow last week, and there's a, they have a very happy customer base, and they were touting their, I think, 53 NPS. And, and that's yeah, so 60s for a company 61. the size of NetApp, yeah. and you guys, like you, you say, off the charts, that's impressive. Go ahead, Stu. Sorry. Yeah, to, to the last piece, you talked about uh, some of the, the announcements that were made that impact, uh, including in V10, there's going to be NAS. We look forward, uh, anything that you know, we should be looking to you know, measure success of the partnerships and anything that, that you, you, your companies are working on together that you can speak to. Well, I, th I think at the end of the day, it's customers and revenue, right? Ensuring that that continues to grow. I mean, you know, Veeam's on fire, right? I mean, they've got, what, 210,000 customers are growing at 450. 245,000. 45, and every day they're adding 200 customers yeah, a day. Peter corrected me. Right, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I really think we measure it by, you know, customers and, you know, and revenue in terms of how we're driving. And then new solution areas, like I said, with cloud, you know, we're very aligned and both companies embracing cloud big opportunity to go after some of these service provider areas. Yeah, I mean, I think we're going to continue to focus on delivering joint solutions. Uh, that's really kind of, uh, if I had to put my finger on one thing that, you know, watch this space, it's joint solutions that we want to put out to the marketplace that are going to benefit our customers. All right, we have to leave it there. Thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. It was right, great thank to see you. Thank you. You're welcome. It. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back, rocking New Orleans with theCUBE, VeeamON 2017.